Well, it used to be going on a Disney World vacation was a little bit more simpler, as back then you had FastPass Plus included with every single ticket, which was a complimentary cut-the-line system, which most people, for the most part, enjoyed. And then after the pandemic happened, Disney has made a lot of changes, included now charging for their cut-the-line system, which was Genie Plus, and now is Lightning Lane, Multipass, and Single Pass. And as we talked about in another video, making almost a billion dollars ever since they implemented this service, which raises the question that Disney has a lot of incentive of course, to continue to sell more and more of these lightning lanes to people that are coming to the theme parks. And we have an article here from that park place that says Disney is caught inflating Walt Disney World wait times up to 300% to sell lightning lanes. So I figured let's read through this article and give some thoughts on it. So hi, I'm Jared of Capture the Magic. And again, this article is from that park place and this is written by Marvin Montanero. I think is how you say his name. If, I, if not, I apologize. Uh, says FastPass used to be included in every Disney ticket, whether you were a, resor a resort guest, an annual pass holder, or someone who got in for free because they're friends with a cast member. Fast passes were just a part of everyone's Disney day. This was something Disney always had over its chief rival, Universal Studios, who sold its Express Pass system at an upcharge. And like we said, this changed after the pandemic here. And they said, financially, the service can be considered a success for the company, garnering more than $700 million for the Parks and Experiences division. However, the service has been substantially lowered the value of Disney's base theme park ticket, which may have played a role in the recent record low attendance seen in Walt Disney World. Fourth of July and Labor Day, both holidays with, that typically see the parks packed with people experience low wait times and crowds throughout Walt Disney World. With such low wait times, there isn't much demand for a paid line skipping service like Lightning Lane. However, it seems as though Disney is trying to artificially create demand in order to drive people toward Lightning Lane. Recently noted Disney historian Joshua L. Harris tested Disney's posted wait times against the actual time he waited in the standby queue, and the results were shocking. So I do, I just, I will just say the 4th of July and Labor Day, I think years ago, maybe 10 years ago, these were much busier holidays, like 4th of July, especially, but recent trends have changed. I mean, one thing since COVID, like some of these trends did change. 4th of July is not as busy as it used to be, uh, even, you know, this past year, but years, especially since 2020. And, you know, Labor Day is historically a pretty low visited holiday in terms of like the list of holiday crowd levels. It's typically on the lower end of that. So while it has been lower in recent years, I wouldn't say this past year uh, was anything exponentially different than, say, past years, at least at least from what I've seen. Uh, but I just want to put that out there that, you know, historically speaking, Fourth of July has been much busier than it has been, I would say, at least the last like three to five years. Uh, Joshua L. Harris says here on Twitter X, did a quick visit to all Disney World parks yesterday, and here are a few examples of inflated wait times thanks to upselling Lightning Lane. And they have the tweet here by Joshua L. Harris, but let's just go over to his Twitter X to check that out. So he says, did a quick visit to all Disney World parks yesterday, and here are a few examples of inflated wait times thanks to upselling Lightning Lane. Posted versus actual. Uh, flight of Passage, posted 50-minute wait, actual wait was 25 minutes. Expedition Everest was posted 25 minutes, actually was 15 minutes. Tower of Terror was posted 40, was actually 10 minute wait. Pirates of the Caribbean was a 25 minute wait, uh, was posted, but it was only 15 minute wait. And the Haunted Mansion was posted 40 minutes and it was a 30 minute wait. He says, while some will say slash think this is better than the inverse, that blatantly obvious statement is also a moronic one to make. Accurate, time, accurate wait times are important to plan one's day. And if they're overly inflated at times 250%, it means that less people will get to experience them. He says, I know this because I did it. Whenever there was a downtime or we always overly inflated the numbers to discourage guests from entering the queue. The difference is that this, it was a temporary and ultimately good guest service. Today, it's decidedly the inverse. And it goes on to say here, he confirmed to that park place that when tracking the time, he began the moment he entered the standby queue and concluded when the experience officially began. For many attractions, this is a pre-show. For Flight of Passage, for instance, it was the second pre-show. For Haunted Mansion, it was the moment you enter the mansion into the foyer. Uh, for something like Pirates of the Caribbean, time was tracked up until the moment guests were loaded onto a ride vehicle. Uh, Flight of Passage, the top attraction in Animal Kingdom, had a posted wait time of 50 minutes, but when Joshua got in line, he was watching the second pre-show for the attraction at just 25 minutes. This is a 100% inflation of the wait time. It seems to serve no purpose other than coercing guests into paying to fit these e-ticket attractions into their park day. And like he went on to say, they said Harris uh, said that inflating wait times is a common tactic Disney once used as an attraction experience downtime. This kept people away from the queue while the attractions team brought everything back up to working order quickly. 
to avoid a pileup of people. He goes on to say, what they have done as a concept for today is they make it artificially higher on the board and post a higher standby time for two reasons, Harris said. First of all, it's to upsell these systems. They want you to buy into the system. And then the second one, and this is the one that most people really grasp, is actually also for the assurance of the person who bought the Lightning Lane. You have to make it high because if you purchase Lightning Lane for September 12th, a very slow day in any of the parks, and then you notice everything's 15 minutes, you'd say, I wasted my money. So it screws on both sides. He's got a point that I mean, I'll, I'll go on a little bit more after we read this about some of the things that we've noticed over the years. We've been going to the park for a while, but he's not wrong in that you would have that at least incentive to not only sell the lightning links, but you also would want people who bought them to feel like it was worth it and not go to guest relations and wanting a refund. So that that's a valid point, actually. He noted that in a private conversation with that park place that back in the time before Lightning Lane, the FastPass system used to run more efficiently. According to Harris, in the time before FastPass Plus, the queue was divided into 80% FastPass riders and 20% standby riders. Sounds about right. From what I understand, when they switched over to FastPass Plus, and even now especially, it's gone to 90-10, he said. And one of the problems is that they don't give any leeway for attraction downtimes. They don't give any leeway for any other operational considerations. So there's no buffer for that. There's no... There's no accounting for that. So I do know it depends, from my understanding, it depends on the lightning lanes and things because let's say they have a backup of lightning lanes. It can get to that 90 10 scenario where they're essentially, you know, for every 100 people, 90 of them are going to be the fast pass uh, or lightning lane people. I don't know for certain, but I don't, I think this is, they have different levels in which, you know, how many lightning lanes versus standby queue people they let on. If the lightning lane gets backed up, that's when they go to like the 90 10 type scenario or higher. So at least from my understanding, but it's it's not all the time. I don't think I think it depends on the the level of people in that in that line. The thing is about this, there's no way to prove it one way or the other. Now, Disney historically has always sort of inflated their wait times. And like he said, at different periods, like they use they've used it as a way to push people around the park in a way as well. So if a ride is on a downtime, then they may show it a higher weight to keep people away from it while it's being worked on. So like he said, they don't have a pile of people. They also you can use it and they have used it in the past to move people around the park more. So if a lot of people get congregated in one area, if you show higher wait times in that area and lower wait times in another area, you're more than likely to push those people to go over in that direction. So they've used it many ways in that way. Also, you know, a lot of times people would much rather wait less in line versus waiting longer in line. So if they posted it, say for 20 minutes, and they waited 40, people aren't going to be very happy. Whereas if you post it for say, 40 minutes, and then they waited 20 minutes, you know, at least in this like scenario, they would be happier about that. Now, this was something that was very common at Disney. But what brings all this into question now is when you're selling the Lightning Link or Genie Plus slash Lightning Link system that they have been selling, which then brings into there's financial incentive to show higher wait times to get people to look at those wait times and say, oh, I don't want to wait 60 minutes for this. Let's get a Lightning Lane to, to not wait an hour for this ride. And before it could have been just moving crowds around. It could have been, you know, wanting people to feel like they waited less in line than initially thought. That makes them feel like they have a win, you know, things like that. Now it is you know, it's easy to bring up financial incentives. And it's hard to argue against that being part of the case, if not the entire case here is financial incentives to sell more of these. Because again, Disney has made over $700 million, almost a billion dollars off of this system since since they implemented it. And now that the parks are their highest revenue generating division in the company, again, that is even more motivation to sell more of these as a lot of people have noted that the parks are bankrolling a lot more areas of the company as they've had struggles, not this summer, but in past you know summers and years of somewhat at the movies. So you do have a lot of motivation, or you would assume looking at this to mark up the wait times to try and sell more of these to not only sell them, but then also make people feel like that bought them that had the, you know, they, they're happy with their purchase to do so. You know, we've noticed personally that sometimes this is the case many times that something will say 40 minutes and it ends up being 25 minutes. Like typically the wait times aren't as long as they are, are typically listed at Disney. But I guess the question comes into, do I think that they're doing this specifically just to sell more lightning lanes? I'm not gonna say 100% of it is just to sell more lightning lanes, given they've done similar things in the past before they had paid you know, lightning lanes and, and Genie Plus. But I think it's undoubtedly a, a factor that they're wanting to sell more of these. I almost think it would be silly to insinuate that they're not motivated and wanting to sell more lightning lanes and doing something like this can easily, you know, even if it's 10% more people buy a lightning lane that day or 5% or however many more, 
that's millions of dollars on the bottom line that they could be looking at by just selling a few more lightning lanes per day. And people have also pointed out the DAS system that Disney is really cracking down on. A lot of those people that are being denied are just told, well, you can get lightning lanes. So there's motivation on that end as well to crack down on the DAS, which they say it was rampant with fraud, which it very well could have been. But there is also motivation on their end to sell more lightning lanes. So I think you are seeing a lot of motivation on Disney's end of things to try and get people to buy more of this cut the line system that used to not be the case. And I think this is what makes people so angry a bit about Disney is that they, they remember going before the, what it was like and they had the fast passes and, and it was a different experience. And now that they have this paid lightning lane you know, product you can buy, they've changed so many of the things have changed. And now it seems even if let's say, let's give Disney all the credit in the world and say they're not doing this just to sell more lightning lanes. It's perceived at the very least that they have a lot of motivation and they're trying to get people to buy more of these passes by making the changes that they're making to like DAS and the wait times here with the lightning lanes and, and the standby queue. So I think it brings up a valid point Now you know, there are services out there that will show you more real wait times versus what's posted. Touring plans has had this for a long time. So you can readily kind of see this, this, uh, the, these numbers out there and you know again a lot of times they are inflated it could you know in their defense it could be for a lot of different reasons i'm sure you can almost make a science of theme park wait times i don't really sure how they measure them anymore they used to give you you would get in line and you would get a red card and you would walk through and they would do that every so often to sort of measure how long it was taking people to get through that line so i don't really sure how they do it nowadays but again i think that you know this guy has a point in bringing up these wait times being very inflated. And so, you know, back in the day, you would have seen this and thought, oh, that's cool. Like, I thought it was going to be 50 minute wait, but it was only 20 minutes. That's not bad. But now you look at it with a little bit of a raised eyebrow. If I were to get, take a guess, because I don't have any evidence of it. Obviously, I don't work for Disney. I don't know anybody that is in this department that has told me anything. But if you're just asking me, coming up to me on the street and saying, hey, do you think that they're inflating wait times? Potentially on some level, whether that's 20% or 80% in terms of like how much of it is the reason for the inflated wait times to sell more lightning lanes. I think undoubtedly they're inflating wait times on some level to sell more lightning lanes. There's a lot of motivation to do so and to act like they wouldn't do that, you know, and to insinuate that they wouldn't be doing this. I think it's a little bit of altruistic thinking about Disney because they have a lot of motivation. Again, it's it's become a huge revenue maker for the parks and how corporations go as stock prices and in, in the stock market type companies go. You know, they want to make more money every year or that stock price will take a hit. So they have motivation to show even more revenue, especially considering they've even said themselves the crowd levels have been down, but the revenue has even gone up a little bit. So what's happening in the parks is less people are coming, but they're charging more per guest. You've seen this also in movie theaters. Less people are going to movies now, but tickets are more expensive. So again, the, the amount of people going to some things is less, but they're being charged more per person. So that's been what's going on at Disney. They don't much care in my opinion, if the if the attendance goes down necessarily, as long as that revenue does not. So if they're, they could be getting a little bit more aggressive, especially they've talked about going into 2025 as the demand is lowering. It's not what it was. They could be getting pretty aggressive about pricing these lightning lanes to try and sell more of them to, you know, again, show on the revenue side of things that things are good because if they show a dip in that revenue in the parks and the attendance is down, there's going to be even more talking about this and especially the stock price. And given again, that the parks are such a big revenue maker for the entire company now is 70% last year of the entire revenue was from the experiences and parks division. Again, it's it, it smoke. I'm not going to say there's fire for sure, but it, there is a lot of motivation there to do this, to try and make up for them. So I would say if you're going to the parks and you're considering buying lightning link, perhaps, you know, take a look at some of these other services out there. Like I said, touring plans has one where it actually has, they have people that go through the lines that will, say you know it's posted 50 it's actually like 35 minutes or something along those lines so maybe check out those because you may not need to spend the money that potentially you'd spend on lightning lane which if let's say you're a family of four that could be an extra hundred over a hundred dollars per day on your vacation you know we go again we go to the parks quite a bit disney and universal if it's a low crowd time you can ride a lot of stuff and you do not need lightning lane and for the most part when we go we rarely actually buy uh, it was G plus or lightning lane because we typically try and go in lower, you know, during the week or lower times anyways. But, you know, you can still do a lot of stuff without getting lightning lane. You know, I, I try and call things as fair, call balls and strikes as I see it. So when I'm looking at this situation, do I personally think that they're doing this? I do. I do think it, now in terms of how much, if you're looking at a scale of, you know, one to a hundred, you know, is it a hundred? 
I don't know if it's a hundred. Is it one? I don't think it's one. It, it's some, you know, it, that's a wide range, but there's some range in there on some level of motivation or are they doing this to sell more lightning lanes? I do think they are doing that. And I do think like uh, the Joshua guy said, there are other reasons as to why they would inflate wait times on certain attractions at certain times. But I do think that this is another caveat thrown into that equation. But either way, that's going to be it, though, for this video. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe to the channel. As we do lots of coverage here of Disney World, Universal Studios, Epic Universe, and Pop Culture, let us know in the comments, do you think Disney is inflating their wait times to sell more lightning lanes? And until next time, we will see you in the parks.